he often gets grouped with <coughs> Saka, um, yeah. Grealish. Yeah. I mean, England have got a and Jude Bellingham as well. Jude Bellingham, what, what a player he is! Yeah. It's incredible, yeah. isn't the it? Midfield is out of this world. At the incredible. Moment. How do you get up, up there with the best in the world? Yeah. yeah. How do you get him in? Can you get him in the same team? What? I mean, yes. I was going to say you're going to have to try, yes. but it's yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. two defenders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two, eight, one, yeah. <laughs> you put yeah. Kyle Walker at the back with yeah, John a, Stones. He's immense. Yeah. Right, leave those two at the back in the middle, and everybody else just go. No, I'm joking. You, yeah. Look, probably could with. Though. You could. What I would say is, Declan Rice as a six, and then you've got Phil Foden, Joby, um, uh, Jude Bellingham in the midfield, the three in the middle, right? You've got Saka on one side. You've got. I would go Anthony Gordon. Okay. On okay. the left hand side. Not Rashford. Not. No, absolutely not. Grealish. He's, okay. he's been way out of form. Way yeah. out mm-hmm. of form. Jack Grealish. Way out of form. Injuries. Yeah. He's, he's just not. He's not there. Marcus Rashford has got all the ingredients to be a world-class player. He really has. But mm-hmm. there's something that's not quite clicking with him over the last two years or so. And that's frustrating. Yeah. But it's also a little bit worrying as well. I think he needs somebody in his corner to rein him in a little bit and just, just redirect him and refocus him. It just seems like he's, he's slightly off calibration at the moment. Do you think a move might help him out there? Yes. Because, uh, yes. you know... Uh, the expectations and the pressure that comes with playing for Manchester United, arguably one of the biggest football clubs in the world, are humongous. It, you, there's mm-hmm. no hiding place. Yeah. There's no hiding place. So by moving to a PSG, for example, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong, massive football club, nowhere near the size of Manchester United. Nowhere near the expectations of Manchester United. Man United should be in the Champions League every year, Challenging for the Premier League title and challenging for the Champions League, um, cha- uh, challenging for the Champions League trophies mm-hmm. every single year, but they're not, yeah. and the pressure is on him. Players like him, Garnacho, Bernardo, uh, Bernardo uh, Bruno, Bruno Fernandes, Fernandes. Yeah. Um, Hoyland. Now the pressure's yeah. on those boys, but I don't think they can handle it. They're not yeah. cut from the same cloth as the the Roy Keynes, the the Paul Linces, the David Beckham's, the Ruud yeah. van Nistelrooy. They're not. They're not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just to it's touch on that my United um, aspect there with Ineos, Jim Ratcliffe taking over twenty five percent of the club. Um, I hear Dougie Freeman. I think it was Dougie Freeman at Bolton when you were. Yeah, yeah. I actually played with him at, at Leeds as well for a short time. Yeah, he's yeah. been linked. Obviously, he as works in the game as head of recruitment. I think something like that. Yeah. Um, at Palace at the moment. He yeah, seems yeah. to be building a nice backroom staff at Man United to yeah. compete again. I don't know what your opinion is on that. Do you think they're going to be back in a soon or maybe a few, few years later? It won't be soon, okay. but the most important thing for, for them, look, we touched on it before, they're a massive, massive football mm-hmm. club, right? Yeah. So they have to start acting like it. And for them to act like it, they need people like Jim, who is a, a Manchester United fan as well. So he sees it not only from a business perspective, but he sees it from the other, the other angles as well, from a fan-led perspective. What do we want to see? We want to see the best players. Yeah. We want to see how do we get the best players? Oh, we need the best um, team of recruiters, the best director of football. We need the best managers. We need the and and the DOFs, the head of um, football, the coaches. They all come from the directors, the director of football. They've got to to see and think about what happens on the pitch, and most importantly. The way to get the best players is by having the best people, the people with the contacts, the connections. Uh, Dougie is one of those people. Having spoken to him um, not too long ago, actually, um, I know that he's super passionate. He's super focused and driven as well. And, you know, he's always, as long as I've known him, he's always wanted to push himself a little bit further and be a little bit better than he was last year. And I think... It would be a great move for him. <clears throat> a great move for him. It would be a great move for them, but it would be one of the first steps in them getting back to something similar to where they were. Yeah. Financially, they will never have a problem yeah. um, gaining money, raising money. They won't because it's Manchester United. They're yeah. on the they're on the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah, you know, that, <laughs> mate. Come on. Yeah, yeah one massive. of the biggest clubs in the exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if they want to, if they want to raise a billion quid. Not every every club can do something like that. Yeah. And they, they won't be able to do it as quickly as Manchester United. So the most important thing is they 
sort the stadium out and then they'll be able to bring in the better players, director of football, head of whatever it is. That's what they need to do. Just slowly but surely start building it from the top down and then once they get to a certain point, they will be able to challenge Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal's again. You know, but yeah. at the moment, they're, they're fighting to get into that Europa League, the, the Champions League spots, aren't they? I don't think they've got enough. 